Today I want to give you an overview of Supabase, an open source Firebase alternative that is eating the world. Supabase, like Firebase, is a backend as a service platform, which means that it gives you all the things that you need from a backend so you don't have to build one yourself. This means that you don't have to deal with servers, updates, security, and all that. And if you are an indie developer or startup, you can move and prototype at record speed. Supabase and Firebase have overlapping features. Both of them allow you to add authentication, a database, file storage, storage, real-time, and serverless functions to your project by just clicking a couple of buttons and writing a couple of lines of code. So yes, they both do the same, but the way they do it is very different. I am no Firebase hater. I made a free four-hour Firebase course because I really like Firebase and I think more people should use it. But the way Supabase does things is too awesome to ignore. PostgreSQL and open source are the two main things that make Supabase different and the reason why it can actually compete with Firebase, which is backed by the full power of Google. The core of Supabase is PostgreSQL, one of the most advanced and powerful relational databases. It is a fact that if you want to model relational data, SQL is the way to go. And most applications we will build will have relational data. More often than not, people try to model relational data with Firebase's NoSQL database. And they soon realize that emulating relationships and keeping data in sync is not an easy thing to do. Supabase literally creates a full PostgreSQL database for every project you make. And give gives you access to it. This is awesome because it is SQL. So modeling relational data isn't hard. And it also makes migrating off Supabase much more easier than migrating off Firebase. Since Supabase gives you a whole database, you can export the entire thing to your desktop with one command. The Supabase dashboard has a database viewer where you can create tables, add or remove columns and see all your data by clicking. Or you can write raw SQL queries as well. Supabase relies on Postgres to do much more than just storing data. I was actually surprised at all the things Postgres can do while doing research for this video. Like for example, did you know that Postgres can do authorization? Using something called raw level security, we can protect our Postgres database, which is something we must do since we don't have a backend and the user's browser will be calling the database directly. Using raw level security, we can specify who can do what in our database and enforce that at the database layer. To enable it, we run this, which enables raw level security on a table called photos, for example. Example. And then we can do this. Here we are creating a policy called photos delete on a photos table. And we're saying that a photo can only be deleted from that table if the user that is deleting it is the same user that uploaded it. Super sweet. Supabase also allows you to add extensions to your database. For example, you can install PG Cron, which creates a job scheduler that runs inside of your database. This is useful to run a database operation every X amount of time. Like on this example, where we are deleting all the notifications that are older than one week every day of the week at 6.30 a.m. And that will all run inside of the database. Super cool. The other thing that makes Supabase so popular is the fact that it is open source. On the architecture page, we can see what tools Supabase uses to make everything work. As an API getaway, or reverse proxy, they use Kong, which is written in Lua. To get a REST API from the Postgres database, they use Postgres, which is written in Haskell. For authentication, they use GoTrue, made by Supabase in Go, based on a project with the same name by Netlify. For serverless functions, they use the Dino runtime. And the real-time, storage, and dashboard are made by Supabase and also open source. Because it is open source, you can self-host Supabase in your own server using the official Docker image or the community project with Kubernetes, Terraform, and AWS. I really like that business model. Companies make something open source that everyone can run. And for people that don't want to manage servers on their own, they offer a hosted solution and charge a fee. In the case of hosted Supabase, you can get up to 500 megabytes of database space, 50,000 monthly active users, 500,000 serverless function calls, and 2 million real-time messages all included on their free plan. Developer experience-wise, the API will be very very familiar to you if you have used Firebase before, or it will be easy to learn if you haven't. Here is how you can create a user with email and password. And here is how you can log in the user using a social provider. This is how you create a bucket called avatars to upload images into. This is how you can call a serverless function. This is how you can create a record on the database. And this is how you can query the database and filter its records. Supabase has clients for most JS frameworks, as well as Flutter, Kotlin, C Sharp, Python, and Swift. 
Compared to Firebase, Superbase is fairly new, and I guess they're still figuring things out. They themselves say their pricing is in beta, and I have encountered a couple of bugs and weird behaviors when working with it that have made me want to wait a bit more before pulling the trigger on building a real-life product with it. And of course, Firebase is much more than authentication, database, and storage. They have a lot of products on analytics, A-B testing, push notifications, and much more stuff. The good news for developers is that there is competition in the market, which means that we, the consumers, win. That's it for this video. If you found it helpful, please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments if you're using Superbase already, and what are the things you liked and disliked about it. Also, let me know if you would like me to make a Superbase course, and what should we build with it. And remember that if you want to learn to code for free with me, all you have to do is click the link below. There you will find free courses on JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, and Next.js, among many others for free. We have courses for all levels, from beginner to advanced, all for free. Click the link below and I will see you there. Onjana, Kamzahago, Sarang Hamida, see you on the next one. Tamabayo, bye-bye.